It's me. So, want to learn how to make a bass that sounds like this? Stay tuned. So, I was working on some tunage. Tunes? Jams? M musica? I was working on a song, and uh, I decided um, it needed that low, droning, wide, uh, bendy bass that you hear a lot in trap music, and you hear it um, like in the breakdown of EDM songs. So, I flicked through some presets, and nothing was doing it for me. So, I decided to make a patch. That's right. I decided to employ the magical, mystical power of synthesis. <laughs> so real quick before I get started here, if you are new here, or actually especially if you're returning, please take a sec right now and hit that subscribe button, hit the thumbs up button, hit the notification bell. Also, leave a comment below if there's something specific you want me to get into or something you need a little bit more clarification on or something like that. Just you know, use that thing. Regarding synthesis, I know it's a huge, big, scary word, but I plan on giving you some usable information for your synth patches. And also in this video, of course, I'll be showing you how I made this huge bass patch using a combinator, the Mighty Thor, uh, some advanced matrix routing, and some outside effects uh, to make this epic patch. So let's dive in. Okay, so here we are in reason and uh are you ready for the unveiling <laughs> i actually spent some time uh on the making this patch so check it out <laughs> right you like it anyway so um this is the combinator um it's available for, for download if you just want to download it right down there um yeah so you can download it and it comes like this uh, I made some macros. I'll show you a bit how I, uh, again, it's kind of a really super deep, deep topic. Not well. We'll see if we can get to it. But um, I made these macros for the most commonly things you'll need. The most common things you'll need. Um, most commonly used parameters. There we go. Uh, so when you're using this type of bass, just a reminder. In order to, the, the key thing that you will change is the attack to give it, here, Just I'll just show you what this does. Let's get a loop going. Cool. When the attack's down, um, it's got a little bit more clickiness to it. Um, it's still kind of subtle because of the way this bass works, but here, you hear it. You can hear it's fading itself in now with too much attack. But you're basically smoothing out the initial attack, which depending on how wavy and smooth you want your bass, that's an important knob. And then filter and go big are similar, um, but they both, they both, in that they both open the filter, I almost said they both one more time. Anyway, uh, the filter opens on this one and the filter opens on this one. But this one hell also, the go big knob also features effects, but we'll get there. Oh, it's just a struggle. So. Oh, I should probably show you what devices are going on in here. There's a lot going on, but the main one that we're affecting right now is this Thor. So. There's some pretty tricky routing going on. Uh, not on this one. On this one, it's just straight to the, you can see this guy moving right here. This one's routed straight to the attack knob on the amp envelope, the attack slider. Just the reach around scratch. All right, yeah, we'll go for that. Uh, and then this go big knob, you'll see a bunch of knobs move. Oh wait, actually you won't because I macroed the go big knob to 
this rotary knob and then this knob changes a bunch of parameters within here but you you can see them routed here anyway we'll get there if we get there but to hear what it does You can hear that reverb tail and all that stuff going on. Now the glide knob affects the portamento knob, which is here. Portamento, glide, they are the same. They're synonymous. Um, there's something in my eye, or at least I think there is. Um, and that's what makes the notes, how long it takes for the notes to bend into each other. Um, as, all the way down, it takes no time for them to jump they just jump notes obviously the typical way you would expect and then the more you add portamento or glide the more they wow wow ramp into each other too fast and it sounds too fast um and obviously they're just jumping and too slow and you almost never get to the note in time so careful with that one Of course, my phone is ringing. Hold on a second. Okay, thank you, telemarketer. All right, so <clears throat> you get it. This is uh, glide time. How long? It's somewhere around here. That time will need to be different. Um, <clears throat> That time's important when it comes to the BPM of your track. You know, you want it to flow with the music. So that's why it's on the face there. It's a very important knob. And then, um, yeah, so that's the face. You can get it done oh, with the phone. I think she got it. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so you can get it done just here on the face. And that was, that was my uh, goal here for, for any noobs or for people who just aren't that interested in synthesis. It's not really for everyone everyone although it is a key skill to have especially you know you want to have your own unique flavor anyway so you can get it done fit your stuff into your into your track here um just right here on the face so it's it's easily drag and droppable in your session and it's super usable so for a deeper dive let's look at there's a couple of things that are key uh, a couple of concepts or whatever, kind of specific to the Thor. Well, some of them are, some of them aren't. But the things that make this patch special, how about that, um, are these two multi-oscillators. Now, on other synths, they will have, um, you'll be able to add voices to, to stack. This is basically Thor's answer to stacking voices in order to detune them to make something that wideness. It adds the width. The width is added... The width uh, exists because the multi-oscillators playing a lot of oscillators slightly out of phase of each other. Um, so that so that's that's key to know how that works in the Thor. So if you ever try to like, you know, if you ever make a super saw, if you're familiar with the concept of w what super saws are or just that that width thing, it works a little different on the Thor. You pull up a multi-oscillator and it it itself is triggering. I don't know, could be four, could be eight voices stacked. And then the this parameter here tells you which type of randomness it's going to introduce to the phase of each of those voices. I hope you're following me here. Uh, and you use this amount knob to make it wider, i.e. more out of tune. Um, go to ham, and now they're not even really notes anymore. They are, but they're the wrong ones for sure. Um, but just a little bit, just a touch, like, like what I have here, and they all of a sudden spread out. So here, I guess I could kind of show you if I just did this. So that's all the waves. They're all saw waves because I chose the saw wave here. They're all saw waves and they're, it sounds, maybe it's four, maybe it's six. They're all stacked and they're just stacked right like this. But when you detune them, they kind of go out of phase and they get wider. That's actually not a terrible visual. So, yeah, so that's what's happening here. See if you go to, you see what happens when you go ham. So, 
that's one multi-oscillator, multi and then I pretty much did the same thing on a second multi-oscillator. I just wanted thick, fat sound, obviously. And then the other key thing, this is a kind of best practice in synthesis for bass, particularly for bass sound design. I have the one oscillator that, and it's either gonna be a sine wave that you're gonna choose or a triangle wave. This one, this, not all uh, synths, like analog synths have triangle wave, but this one does. Um, it's basically the same thing as a sine wave, but with a little bit of grit to it. The re the, but the purpose for this oscillator being added into the patch is that it's the clean sub frequency. You need that to keep the notes focused, you know, in all of that wideness, and also to add weight, to add bottom. So that just sounds like this. If it was a sign, see, you can hear that buzz a little bit. That's the triangle. Here's the sign. You can also hear the sub clicking a little bit. It does that if there's no attack. So there we go. So already this knob, you can see why it's useful. filter down okay so that's the oscillators and kind of how they work and why I chose what I chose um, so then the next the next part if you can actually that, I like the Thor because of the way it draws this diagram here so we're starting here at the oscillators and then we're moving forward into the mixer where you can mix the oscillators in volume amplitude and then it goes straight up to the filter because I activated these so that's where it's going now in the filter the filter I think we know what a filter does we use them on our EQs we use them in our synth patches um, they're the key to this type of synthesis which is called subtractive synthesis uh, do I want to get into all that not really but look it up um, so we know what filters do um, So this is a low pass filter. It's filtering out all the high frequencies, but it's also rooted in this case on the Thor, it's automatically rooted to its own filter envelope. You don't have to route it like you do on other synths. It's hardwired. Um, I like that, that's old school. Um, it's hardwired and so this is doing a, a filter sweep every time you trigger the envelope by hitting a note. Uh, it makes a filter sweep wherein the filter on note on opens a little bit letting some more of that uh buzz in so wow <laughs> i just yeah i'm gonna do that wow it's kind of what it's doing with the filter it's opening and then closing over some time that's what this routing this this not routing this hard wiring and my uh settings is doing so then the the rest is just routing i routed the um you know, as it pertains to the Thor, the the only th other things I did was route route up this this macro here to some of the effects. So this macro, when it turns up, is bringing the chorus in. Rotary one, where is it? Rotary one chorus feedback. It's changing this. It's going up by whatever that is. It a percentage? I'm not sure, but fifty the, by the number of fifty six, it goes up. Um, I, I, I'm not sure. Is it a percentage? Probably. Um, and then it goes, it gets wetter. Um, and then also as the rotary is turned, the filter resonance gets a little higher and the filter opens up. So that is everything you need for the go big setting. Not everything, actually. I think I routed some more stuff that's underneath. And speaking of underneath, the next part of what makes this patch cool and big is all of the extra processing. So I won't go too crazy in depth, in depth into this, but just so you can get an idea of what you can do with routing. Um, the synth itself is going into the combinator and then the combinator 
is running these effects as insert effects. So, and then everything is getting, if you've seen my other videos, I'll do one of those things where the thing pops up. Uh, I did a video on, a, on how this routing works and why, how to use this spider audio merger and splitter and how to use this mixer here to do some crazy routing. So using these two things, I was able to split the signal and do some parallel processing and some stuff. So here, you can see the parallel processing here. It's just a copy of the clean base. And then this copy is being affected by all of this stuff. So here, if we hear it. Oh, you probably can't hear it because all the upper stuff is being filtered out. There you go. So you can add some, some love on top. Okay. So real quick, the dirty signal, the non-clean signal, is going through a screen floor. It's getting distorted with some tape distortion. It's getting EQ'd so that it stays out of the way of the bass, because this is just to add some upper, some upper stuff um, that wasn't really there before. By right? the distortion, we'll add it, add the harmonics, and then um, you have the opportunity if you want to make the upper stuff even wider because it won't mess you up. Uh, there's a reverb on the upper stuff. There's a compressor. I think the compressor is on. Yeah, it's on the just the upper stuff. What is this? Is this a sidechain deal? Let's hit K so I can de declutter this. Uh, this is the sidechain compressor. Okay, so this is fun. So on your high... When you use this patch, if you decide to filter out and use the higher frequencies, the reverb that comes in that adds that extra width is actually sidechain to the synth itself, i.e. your bass comes in super punchy, but when you let go of the note, the reverb comes in as the release. Instead of it just kind of fading out as the synth release, the reverb comes in as the release here. You hear that? That's the reverb uh, acting as the release tail. So that's, that's fun. Uh, and then I put a maximizer on it so that you can't, there's a ceiling on it, a, a limiter, if you will. It's a limiter um, so that you can't go too big. So yeah, so that's the patch. Um, Yo, so real quick, uh, it's the middle of the night and I'm editing this and it occurred to me I didn't go over something with you that's on this synth, um, on this patch. There are these two buttons here. They lower the oscillators, the, they lower the octave on all three of the oscillators. So this one lowers all three by one octave. You can see them move. And this one lowers all three by two octaves. Uh, it comes in handy. I have like a smaller MIDI keyboard, this guy right here, and um, even at its lowest octave, it wasn't triggering notes low enough for me. Um, so just in case that happens to you too, I, I added the ability to drop the whole synth by an octave or two. So that's what these two do. So cool. Back to your regularly scheduled programming. Hope that kind of demystified some of it for you. Um, if you have questions on specific parts or why I did specific things, um, let me know. I don't always know. I don't always remember what, you know, there's always that part of the synth you look at that nobody ever talks about. And you're like, how come nobody tells me what that is? Um, if you have that, just let me know. Um, and I will tell you. Um, so yeah, like I said, download this. It's super easy to use. And it, it's a sound that you hear a lot. Um, yeah, so that's it. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really appreciate it. If you 
gained some knowledge here, please do me a favor and take a second right now and hit the subscribe button, hit the bell notification, leave a comment, leave a thumbs up, you know, engage. <laughs> uh, don't be shy. <laughs> anyway, uh, there's some more videos to watch. I don't know which way I'm supposed to, is it this way? Are they like right here? Oh, well, they're not on my mic. Anyway, thank you so much for watching and uh, yeah. <laughs>